In this online lecture, we're going to discuss the radical reactions of alkenes. And what we're going to learn here is number one, the reaction of an alkene with HBr and peroxides yields an anti-Markovnikov product. We're also going to see number two, the reaction mechanism is a three-phase radical addition reaction, which involves initiation, propagation, and termination. We've seen this before with radical reactions with alkanes. And number three, we're going to see that this reaction only works with HBr, not HF, HCl, and HI. So let's look at our overall reaction first. Here we have an alkene, we're reacting HBr, and look at this product that we're getting. Notice this is the anti-Markovnikov product. Notice the Br here is adding to the carbon that has more hydrogens, or we can say the carbon that is less substituted. Typically, the first orgo reaction you ever learn is this one right here, HBr without peroxides to an alkene. And in this case, you get what's called a Markovnikov product. The Br is adding to the carbon with fewer hydrogens, or we can say the carbon that is more substituted. We also saw the mechanism for this reaction, and remember it takes place through a carbocation intermediate, which is why we see the Markovnikov product. So the question is, why is it that when we add the peroxide to this reaction, why are we getting the anti-Markovnikov product? Well, of course, it's all about mechanism. And let's take a look at it here. Remember, it's that three-phase mechanism. It starts with initiation, and it starts with the peroxide reacting with light. And as we've seen before in a previous online lecture, the light splits the peroxide, creating two radicals. So now once our radicals are created, then we could jump to our propagation steps. And the first propagation step, the radical reacts with the HBr that we're adding to the alkene. And here is our electron movement, very similar to what we've seen before. This one electron meets up with this one, and the other electron in the HBr bond jumps up on top of the Br. And what we have here is a connection between the RO and the H. And in the process, we're creating a Br radical. Notice the characteristics here. We're starting with a radical and we're ending with a different radical. It is then this Br radical that reacts with the alkene. So this arrow movement should be new to us. Let's make sense and see what happens here. This electron meets up with this electron here. So basically, one of the electrons in the pi bond is meeting up with the electron in the Br. And the other electron in the pi bond is jumping up onto that second carbon there. And as a result, we're getting something that looks like this. Now, don't memorize this makes sense. Remember, it has to be this way because the radical has to form on the secondary carbon instead of the primary carbon because, again, we saw before that secondary radicals are more stable than primary radicals. It is this propagation step that simply explains why this reaction is anti-Markovnikov. Simply put, the Br has to be put on the primary carbon so that the secondary radical can form. So this is why we're paying attention to mechanism to understand why this happens this way. Now, what's the next propagation step here? Well, remember, we're going to react this with an HBr that hasn't been turned into a radical yet. And this is our electron movement right here. Notice the result of this electron movement is this right here, which happens to be our product. But as a side product, we also get the Br radical, which enables this reaction to keep propagating. And just like we've seen before, there's the third termination step. Remember, which involves two radicals coming together to simply make a non-radical. So one of the Br radicals floating around could possibly meet up with another. The electron movement would look like this, and we would end up with this as a result. But remember, we saw before in a previous online lecture how to predict the termination steps. That involves thinking of all the radicals that are present in the propagation steps. And remember, another radical present in propagation is this radical right here. He can actually meet up with another radical just like him. And together, as they meet up in this way, they're going to make a product that looks like this. And to predict the last possible termination step, it could be possible that this radical right here, Br, meets up with this radical right here. 
And if they meet up again, electron movement looks like this, and we end up with this as a result right here. Now remember, these termination steps happen at the end, so we don't get a lot of these products. A majority of the products in this reaction would be the anti-Markovnikov product. So that's why, let's go back to the overall reaction. If we're on an orgo exam, we're going to pick this as our major product for this reaction. Remember, the termination steps are only for us to understand how this reaction ends. And sometimes a professor might ask on an orgo exam, what are the other possible products of this reaction? If we wanted to determine that, we would look at the possible termination steps. That's why we want a method to figure out what are the possible termination reactions so we can figure out these side products if necessary. Now, a term that describes this reaction, we can simply call this a radical addition reaction. Think about it, we're adding H and Br to this alkene, and it's happening through a radical mechanism, hence the term radical addition reaction. Now, let's focus on our quick product method here. Let's say we're given this problem right here and we want to predict the product. Remember, we want to be able to get quickly to product on an orgo exam because time is of the essence. So how would your quick product method work here? Well, notice first you would see HBr with peroxide and you would see an alkene. So you'd be thinking of this reaction. And what we would first do is look at the carbons, each carbon within the alkene. And since we know walking into the test that this is an anti-Markovnikov reaction, we know to add the Br to the carbon that has more hydrogens. We'll notice the top carbon doesn't have any hydrogens, it just has that methyl connected to it. But the bottom carbon does have this hydrogen right here. And since that's one more hydrogen than the carbon above, then that's how we know to place the Br on the bottom carbon. This would be our major product. So, quick product method here, very simple. However, be careful here. Remember, this reaction only works with HBr. For instance, if you try to do this reaction with HCl and peroxide, you actually end up with this as a product. And notice, look at this product here. This is a Markovnikov product. RCl is on the carbon that has fewer hydrogens. And if you try to pull this reaction off with HI and peroxide, again, you get a Markovnikov product. Why is this so? Well, let's make sure we understand this. Let's go back to the propagation step with Br. Remember, this reaction does work with Br. And remember, when we get to this particular propagation step, this is what the electron movement happened to look like. And we got this right here as a result, showing the Br on the carbon with more hydrogens. Now, just take my word for it, the delta H of this reaction happens to be negative 9 kilocals per mole which means this reaction is exothermic and therefore favorable. But remember, this is not the only propagation step for this reaction. The other propagation step involves our product here with HBr, and this is the electron movement that we saw before, leading to this as a result, our overall product. Take my word for it again here, the delta H for this reaction happens to be negative 14 kilocals per mole. Again, an exothermic and very favorable process. Now, let's do the same type of analysis though, but with Cl. Let's say we got to this step in the propagation of HCl with an alkene and peroxide. Again, arrow movement would look like this, and we would end up analogously with this structure. And the delta H for this reaction happens to be negative 22, exothermic, which means again, this is favorable as well. However, the second propagation step right here, the second analogous propagation step that is, the delta H for this reaction happens to be positive 2, which is endothermic, which means this second propagation step is not very favorable. And notice, look at the product of the second propagation step. The product here would be the product of the overall reaction. But we're going to see that this reaction doesn't happen, and here's why. Again, if you take this endothermic reaction and you compare it to a possible termination step, in this case, two Cl radicals coming together to make a Cl2 non-radical, the delta H for this termination reaction happens to be exothermic, which means it's more favorable than the propagation reaction above, 
which means if termination is more favorable, this reaction will terminate before it has a chance to keep propagating. So basically, this reaction simply never gets up and goes. It just simply starts, terminates, end of story. So be careful. It only works with HBr. That's it, not with these guys right here. Now, you might be wondering, well, if it doesn't do that, then why do we get the Markovnikov product? Well, that's because it simply goes down the mechanism that we learned before with HX addition to an alkene. And remember, that reaction had a Markovnikov type product. And of course, the mechanism was completely different from a radical mechanism. It involved a carbocation. So, what have we learned here? Key points. We saw that number one, the reaction of an alkene with HBr and peroxides yields an anti-Markovnikov product. Number two, the reaction mechanism is three-phase radical addition reaction. Initiation, propagation, terminations are the steps. And three, we saw this reaction only works with HBr, not HF, HCl, or HI.